Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to class. Uh, we will uh, delve deeper into the subject of uh, prayer and intercession. So we'll pray together, and then we will uh, begin. Would uh, anyone like to lead in prayer? Sagar, please lead. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this morning, Father, as we are going to start this class, Father. Help us, give us wisdom, Father, so we become able to understand everything. Father, bless our teacher, Father, give him knowledge, give her knowledge, Father, so whatever he will taught us, Father, he will uh, taught through your spirit, Father. We submit all these things in your mighty hand, Father, ask in the name of Jesus, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, in the last class, we were talking about... Um, having a disciplined prayer life and we said that there are some practical things that help us to maintain that which is um, to have a particular place and a time we said that prayer lists or a format will help us to focus on what we want to pray for uh, we also said that at times we may want to engage in praying in the spirit because praying in the spirit is praying without ceasing when paul wrote to the thessalonians in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 he said pray without ceasing or pray without stopping uh, when we pray in our own language it, it's not possible to pray continuously for long hours but when we pray in tongues when we pray in the holy spirit um, we can pray for hours. We can pray for you know long durations. So that is how we understand pray without ceasing, okay? Because continuous prayer in our own language that's that's not very practical, and it, uh, generally we are not able to do that. But um, apart from our scheduled times, so in the last class we said to become more disciplined in prayer, we have to set aside time, okay? So that means there are specific times at which we um, pray, but there have also got to be um, extended periods of time. Anytime we should be able to pray and pray for long duration. So that is possible when we pray in the Holy Spirit or pray in tongues. Then we said that when we have time, we can uh, have prayer days or set aside certain days uh, and then pray uh, throughout the day or have prayer seasons where we have a few days, maybe three days, seven days. Uh, there are people who pick 21 days. So it's up to us. Whatever period of time we have, we can take it up and we can spend that in prayer. So in this way, we can develop our own personal uh, prayer life. Okay, so developing our own personal prayer life is very important. Now, uh, personal prayer life, I think we can never really prove it to the world isn't it so we can't uh, we we can't tell people how much we are praying or um, you know we they, they will not have any idea but i i believe this is the most important thing so uh, in in everything in our faith walk with the lord uh, if we can develop a personal prayer life that will strengthen us throughout our journey Okay, uh, and uh, yeah this is the most crucial thing um, Maybe we go through some easy seasons, we go through some tough seasons, but in every season, uh, having that time with the Lord is important. And in the last class, I also asked the question, why can't we just have um, a short time, maybe two minutes, three minutes, five minutes for prayer? And uh, we can just say, isn't it, that yesterday I took time, I started my day with prayer, why should we have a long period of time, you know, maybe 30 minutes, one hour? Uh, how is it uh, necessary or important? Okay, so do you remember that, that point we discussed in the last class? Yeah, so it is important to have little long period of time because uh, prayer is not just telling God our requests. So if it's prayer is only that, yeah, five minutes should be okay. We can cover all the necessary points in five minutes, isn't it? But it's more than that. So there are many benefits uh, of having this long period of time with God. So when I say long, uh, don't get worried. Maybe some of us, we don't have the practice or the habit of um, sitting in prayer for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We're not used to that. But we can keep increasing it. 
slowly you can increase so you can go from 10 minutes to 15 minutes to 30 minutes right it can go up to one hour uh, and even beyond so uh, there's a picture there that is William J. Seymour. Uh, he is uh, one of the um, uh, key people in uh, the Azusa Street Revival. So you, we will study about revivals in some of our courses. So the Azusa Street Revival is very, um, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's uh, an event or uh, something that took place in 1905. Uh, and... Uh, it was a powerful revival. And one of the things that took place in the 1905 revival is uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But you know, what is his testimony? His testimony is that he was a man who wanted to seek God. And uh, he also wanted to go study in a Bible college. But because in those times, in the early 1900s, there were a lot of limitations uh, upon the people of color. People of color means, um, uh, you know, those who were dark skinned in the United States, if you know, uh, they were not allowed to do many things, like even travel in, in uh, a public transportation. or There were a lot of restrictions. So it was difficult for him to join a Bible college. Uh, he managed somehow, he found a place where the word of God was being taught. But he was not allowed to sit with the other students because he, he was uh, a black American. Uh, so what he did is he just managed to sit outside. So when the lectures were going on, to listen to the lecture, he will sit because he was so hungry. He wanted to learn. He wanted to pray. So uh, he said, it's OK. Even if I cannot sit in the group, I will sit outside and I will listen. I want to listen to the word of God. So he sat and he used to learn like that. He just an opportunity to listen was good enough for him. And then he decided that he will seek God more and more. So he started spending time with God prayer. So apparently uh, he started, you know, whatever, one hour, two hours. So it became a standard for him to spend seven hours, seven hours of prayer every day. So for, for a long time, he was praying like that. He was the only one who was praying like that. Uh, and after that, uh, some meetings started. Okay, So it is in those meetings that the revival broke out. So he was one of the leaders of the Azusa Street Revival. And the main thing that he was engaged in was prayer for long hours, long durations of time. Uh, he used to spend with the Lord, pray in the spirit. right? And uh, you can all read about uh, that revival and the different things that took place. Um, but the point that I'm trying to make is that, you see, um, there's something very powerful uh, about spending extended periods of time, extended hours with the Lord personally. Uh, and it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of focus. Uh, uh, okay, So uh, that's something we have to develop. Maybe we are not good at it right now, but we can grow. We can increase. Right, we can become stronger. So, why should we pray for so many hours? What is the importance? Uh, one, of course, is building our intimacy with God. Now, intimacy is not like um, uh, high by. Uh, we all have friends. Okay, so we may have some friends that we just say hello to, uh, but then there are other friends that you know we we are very close to, uh, and uh, that is that is a close relationship. Isn't it? So when we talk about closeness, how do we build a close friendship or a close relationship? We have to spend time. We have to communicate. So in the same way, when it comes to God, um, we know so much about God theory. You know, we are having all these classes. We may read books. We may listen to sermons. So we develop a picture of God, an idea of God. But we may not spend time with him. So if we know about God and we're not spending time with the Lord, then what's happening? There's a disconnect. Like we know, theoretically, we know God is like this. God is uh, good. You know, God listens to prayer. Theoretically, we know. But in our... Uh, in our intimate relationship with God, we, we uh, are not able to experience those things. But when we spend time with the Lord, right? personally we sit, we, we take time with the Lord, we pray. Uh, then what happens? Intimacy with God. We are able to develop that. Okay, uh, And um, I usually like this example when uh, you know someone calls us on the phone. Uh, if it's a new person, we don't know. We say, OK, who's speaking? 
we ask because we don't know the voice but imagine if it's a family member they call you all the time so maybe we've not saved their number they're calling from a different number but as soon as you pick the call you say hey hey this is my sister this is my brother we know their voice because we are spending time with them that is closeness that is familiarity so uh, for us to develop a strong relationship with god like that uh, we have to spend time so if you don't spend time then we miss out on the intimacy which we can have with god um what are the other advantages to um uh, advantages from spending time with god okay uh, i'll i'll come to a question it is on the chat but uh, i'll first finish all the um important things that will happen when we take time with the lord second is we can overcome temptation okay jesus told his disciples that when they pray right uh, if they pray they'll be able to overcome temptation so uh, even in our everyday lives um, you know we were we were talking about spiritual warfare in another class yesterday and we said that every day is battle zone we don't know what uh, challenges we may face what um, you know the enemy is planning against us so even if there is some temptation which uh, he will bring our way when we are people of prayer right we are able to overcome temptation uh, so how to overcome temptation be a person of prayer when we are people of prayer then whatever temptation comes upon us we can overcome it um, you know in a in an easier way and a strong way so what else uh, when we spend time with the lord our will is aligned to the will of god you remember the time in the garden of gethsemane where jesus went uh, he was praying and um, because of the the um, you know seriousness of the next step which is to go on the cross even jesus right he did not want to be separated from the father so he was he felt that uh, what if i don't go on the cross okay so the the greatest challenge for jesus was yes it would have been difficult for him to face um, uh, you know all the pain physical emotional pain to be on the cross but more importantly separation from the father no that is what jesus uh, you know uh, would have feared the most and so he says father uh, can you take this cup away from me fine so in his mind he has a thought which is not according to the purpose of god now how does he how does he overcome that he takes time in prayer so we know that he spent time in prayer he asked his disciples to spend time in prayer then what happened at the end at the end he said okay father Uh, not my will let your will be done so for us to align our will to god's will we need to spend time in prayer it's only when we spend time in prayer that um maybe we are thinking things which are not right which are not in god's plan for us uh, which may even be evil but as we are spending time with the lord what will happen god will help us to align our thoughts our hearts to what he wants us to do so we can become you know very um, obedient believers obedient children sons and daughters of god when we spend time with the lord then other than that uh, we've said that um, uh, in our strength remember we we talked about it so when we wait in the presence of the lord uh, we don't understand how but we become strong in our spirit man you remember we said that we are spirit soul and body we do so many things for the body to keep it strong we may even know what to do for the soul to keep it happy and strong healthy but what about the spirit how to take care of the spirit because spirit is the most important part of us it's the eternal part of us even body one day you know here as after our journey on earth is over even the body will not be there uh, for us but the spirit is what uh, is is um, important for us to also develop 
so we need to develop the human spirit develop the human spirit how to develop one of the ways is to um, uh, to be intimate with god right of course the word of god praying in the spirit spending time uh, in prayer of every kind what will it do the inner man we call the spirit man as the inner man so anyone who spends time in prayer what happens to them they become stronger okay stronger means what stronger means we are more aligned to what god wants us to do stronger means we are more sensitive to what god wants us to do uh, we we can um, hear from god faster we keep asking right how to hear god's voice how to hear god's voice so when the inner man becomes strong we can we can be quicker when to hear god's voice so there are many things about the strength of the spirit but how will we receive all these things only when we spend time with the lord so in extended periods of time all these things are taking place that is why we cannot compromise you know our time with the lord then what else we will uh, also develop uh, we'll also become more open to the activity of the holy spirit you know we want the holy spirit to move isn't it we want the holy spirit to speak we want the holy spirit to bring his miracles his power uh, so how to have that remember i told you about uh, william seymour that uh, when he spent time with god what happened uh, you know it it led to uh, something amazing it led to a revival now every person spending a lot of time we don't know whether you know that is exactly what will happen next but one thing that we can see in the lives of men and women of god is that whenever they have spent time with the lord like this extended periods of time something amazing has taken place so there are a lot of pictures we can talk about the stories of everyone there's a picture at the back there evan roberts he is a revivalist from the welsh revival uh, and the story of the welsh revival is like uh, seymour uh, he was a person who also um, he was a bible college student also okay and uh, in his holidays he just went back and um, he wanted to do ministry so he went back to his church he asked the pastor there but then they were not confident because he was still so young and just a student so they didn't give him an opportunity but at that time he attended a meeting and in that meeting there was a man who shared and that man uh, talked about uh, um, you know a, a prayer a prayer and the prayer is lord bend me okay so it's um, i suppose like the scottish language lord bend me uh, in that it means that god i surrender myself to you you do what you want with my life okay so that was the meaning of that one line but that one line it touched evan roberts so much not just him there were others also that one line really touched them and then they started praying that one line so apparently evan roberts even when you, he used to walk um, you know up and down go here and there he would still uh, he would still pray that one line and many other prayers uh, but that one line was the key to the welsh revival so he started praying for hours he started praying for extended periods of time and then the revival broke out and it's one of the most powerful uh, revivals in history um, that we read about so uh, the point that i'm trying to make is that when we pray we open the door to the work of the holy spirit okay things have happened that people never planned things have happened that people uh, maybe they did not even imagine such things can happen right miracles healings deliverances uh, uh, so breakthroughs um, in fact if you read about the welsh revival you will read about how the entire city was touched like crime fell down in the city because the people started praying okay so so many things took place but uh, just tracing it back to where it started it started with one man who wanted to pray it started with one man who decided to spend time with the lord got it so 
these are all the advantages when we spend time with the lord okay um and there are many stories that we can talk about but I, i'll just uh, stop with that we can open the door for the holy spirit to work um and that is why even before we minister uh, maybe you know your sunday service or your some friday meeting take time in the presence of the lord pray pray up we usually say you no know, pray up why because uh when we pray we are making place for the holy spirit okay holy spirit will come he will do what only he can do so these are all the reasons why we must spend time with the lord and also the final point that is given here uh, in in that list is um, uh, it helps us de stress okay and i've talked about this earlier when we uh, wait in the presence of the lord uh, we we go in with lot of anxiety fear questions doubts confusions but uh, i don't know if you have noticed when we come out we come out with peace isn't it because we have shared our heart with god and you know god has done a work in our hearts uh, god has released us from all those things that were heavy on our hearts so uh, this is another advantage so those of us you know if if we feel like oh i'm so stressed every day i feel so tensed just take time in god's presence start your day by spending maybe even half an hour just sit in god's presence pray pour out your heart uh, cry out to him and then you start your day you walk with peace okay so these are all the advantages and that is why uh, we can't we can't compromise on uh, extended hours with the lord um, and short prayers will not do okay short prayers will not uh, be good enough uh, for us to experience these things now a couple of other things which are there in our notes one more thing is it says uh, cleansing and healing cleansing and healing so what is this so same way as i've been sharing now that when we are in god's presence so many things happen right but there may be some parts of us that need to change okay we may even know that okay this is not right about me maybe it's an anger issue maybe it's uh, it's just a stubbornness maybe it's just laziness maybe it's you know uh, some confusion or, or um, uh, i'm just unwilling to to listen to god's plan for my life it can be anything we all know our own attitudes so what happens is when we are in god's presence something inside us can break something inside us can change okay but that cannot happen just like that we have to be in god's presence so uh when we make this a habit right every day uh, or or you know maybe in some seasons we are finding it difficult uh, and then um, uh, you know we we kind of uh, uh, compensate for it over the weekend something like that but spending extended times in the presence of the lord will change us because god can clean our hearts he can clean the person that we are right uh, don't we all say this like we look at uh, someone who is not following jesus but then um, they uh, are born again right and then they start to uh, really love the lord follow god with everything uh, in their being and then we look at their lives and we say oh is it the same person they are so different now in the bible who is a good example of that a great change is there anyone like that in the bible great transformation paul yeah okay saul um, we 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 say you know saul who was a persecutor uh, he then turned into a minister of the gospel and passionately served the lord so how is this possible how can there be such a change in a person only god can do it and one of the ways in which god does it is when we are in his presence so if i want to change i want to become a new person this is the way just go you know shut yourself uh, you know in your prayer closet or just take some time uh, maybe you know if you guys are here in the bible college during your prayer times or wherever you know you have your space you just go there and cry out to the lord spend time with the lord because uh, real and lasting change in us will come from that place 
okay and no matter how much we grow in the lord you know we may be walking with god whatever you know 20 years 30 years doesn't matter we are still here on the earth we are not perfect right if we are perfect we have to take a take a flight to heaven okay so because we are not perfect we are all still here and uh, so uh, no matter how uh, strong we are and mighty we are we still need to change we still need to uh, transform ourselves into the image of uh, or the character of our lord jesus christ so this we can practice all the time okay all the time and experience cleansing in our hearts look at the um, the psalmist david he cried out to god he said in psalm 51 and verse 10 create in me a clean heart o god and renew a steadfast spirit within me so he understood his own weaknesses and he said god please give me a, a, a clean heart i don't want this heart with you know uh, all these different issues clean me up and give me a spirit which is steadfast steadfast means uh, like a firm decision it's not here and there and all over the place a firm decision to follow god a firm decision to grow in god a firm decision to love god Okay? a strong heart like that so david is asking god please help me god uh, i i want to be clean and when did he write this psalm psalm 51 is when he wrote after he uh, you know he sinned with uh, bathsheba okay uh, and uh, he was repenting before the lord and he was saying god it's so wrong i need to change i need to i need to be cleansed uh, by your work from deep within and so he wrote this psalm and he cries out to god god give me a clean heart give me a steadfast spirit and uh, similarly, you know, you can see uh, other Psalms that talk about the cleansing within the heart, where Psalm 139, um, there's, there is a passage, 23 and 24 verses, which says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. See if there's anything wicked in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So it's only God who can change us. It's only God who can, who can um, transform a person right into the character of his own son the image of his own son okay who should we become like who is the model or the pattern for us yes so when we say change transformation we are always pointing towards jesus so to have a character like jesus to think like jesus to um, um you know uh, be intimate with the father like jesus to minister like jesus right everything because he is the ultimate goal for us transformation means becoming more like jesus how can that happen when we spend time with the lord okay um here um, there's a section that talks about inner renewal and strength I think we've already uh, touched that point many times. So I'll skip it. Uh, and moving on to God ideas. Okay, God ideas. So God ideas simply means that, um, you know, sometimes we, we need the wisdom of God in our situations. And uh, when something happens, we are not able to decide, like, what to do, what to say. But when we spend time in prayer, what happens sometimes uh, like God's thoughts come to us how can it come to us it can come to us in many ways we we can get an idea or we can see a picture right uh, so I remember this one particular incident which happened many years ago actually it's one of uh, my friends um, uh, like one of our, our like you know family friends who was traveling and uh, he went to his company sent him to uh, uh, some country he came back and uh, as part of the work they gave him cash in dollars to bring back to the office so he came back and he also brought some money uh, you know like cash in dollars um, and uh, he was so jet lagged uh, once he came back, he told all of us, hey, I'm back and everything. And then uh, um, he cleaned up his bag. He cleaned up his house. And all that was done. And then I think a couple of hours after he, ha he had unpacked, uh, he told all of us that, hey, my money is missing. 
I I don't know what happened. Can you imagine? It's so scary. Like in dollars, uh, and uh, he can't find it. I don't know what I did. I was so tired, uh, and then he was just like, "Pray for me, pray for me, everybody, please pray for me," because I have to go to office the next day, and I don't have the cash which was given to me. So I remember we all prayed for him, uh, and we said, "Hey, don't worry. You know, God will do something. He'll help you." Um, but this is the testimony. He he searched the whole house, and then he was constantly telling us, "I can't find it. Maybe I dropped it somewhere. I really don't know what I did." And he was also so tired, isn't it? But when he slept that night, he had a dream. Okay, and in that dream, he saw that packet of money. and he saw that packet was somewhere deep inside the dustbin in his house so he woke up he checked the dustbin and there it was that parcel like the the envelope with the money he just pulled it out and then he sent all of us text messages saying can you believe it god showed me in a dream where that money was kept okay see so i'm just telling us god can speak in many different ways you may get an idea you may just get a thought okay i should call so and so or um, you you may you know uh, get a dream you may get a vision or somebody might speak to you and say have you thought of doing this but where is it coming from it's coming from god because we spend time in prayer we said god you have to help us you have to tell us what to do and god will speak but he can speak in different ways only thing is we have to be sensitive and we have to pick it up Okay, uh, so when we pray, God gives us ideas for breakthroughs in our lives. We may not know. We may think, okay, which skill I have? You know, this talent and that talent and this training and that training. What job should I do? Right? But only God knows which particular job will make you prosper or you know get you a good income. Uh, God can show and say, okay, you try doing this. and when you move according to the ideas that god gives our life becomes very prosperous okay so this is the way in which when we spend extended time with the lord he will speak to us there'll be solutions to problems life's problems or um, even as a pastor right people come uh, to us they say pastor what should i do i got two uh, two job offers should i take this job should i take that you're like oh my gosh <laughs> how do i know which job you know this person needs to take but good thing to do is just pray say god i don't know but you know you guide this person you help this person then god begins to speak and show us okay so these are all ways in which uh, god will minister to our hearts when we take time with him and so far we talked about uh, personal prayer but there is something known as corporate prayer corporate prayer means praying together with the people praying together with other believers so usually a uh, corporate prayer happens in church isn't it we get together with others and we we pray so um corporate prayer also can be planned it can be regular and that's very healthy for the life of the church but here's the point corporate prayer is as powerful as the people and their personal prayer lives so imagine if nobody has strong personal prayer life then how can the group's prayer be powerful okay so it's important even when we consider corporate prayer um yes it it's good it's great but the people who are gathering their own personal prayer lives need to be strong then the group prayer will be strong okay so this is about personal prayer um and uh, you know taking time aside to discipline ourselves for extended uh, periods of time in prayer but just because we said that we must be disciplined and we have to set aside time it doesn't mean that we can't pray at other times you got it so there is planned prayer but there is also uh, what we call spontaneous prayer spontaneous prayer means I don't have a plan, but I I feel led to pray, so I'll just start praying, right? Outside of your plan, sometimes you just have to go ahead and be spontaneous in prayer as well. 
so um, these are some key thoughts. So let me look at the question here in the chat. Um, Daniel Oliver is saying, ma'am, can we force someone to increase the prayer time? Forcing ourselves only is difficult, Daniel. Um, OK, but let's, let's see. Uh, I want to ask that how to encourage someone to increase the prayer time. OK, uh, how to ask, encourage someone. Fine. So uh, what we can do is maybe we can talk to them and we can see why they don't have the motivation uh, to spend time in prayer. OK, so then when we're talking to them, we may find out different things that, uh, OK, maybe they don't have time. Um, their mornings are too rushed. They don't have time. Or you may find out some issue. So when you find out the issue, uh, try to address the issue. Maybe you can give them some ideas about how they can uh, make time another part of the day or some solution. I think that might help, uh, Daniel, because they may have a reason for why they are not spending that time with God. So maybe talk it through with them and then uh, help them with a solution. Um, is that OK? Or uh, you, you have something else? OK, fine. Sure. So he's happy with that. Praise God. Anything else? Anything else about uh, personal prayer time? OK, so if there's nothing, we'll move on. Next next uh, chapter. Chapter 9 is about prophetic prayer. Okay. So um, prophetic prayer is prayer which is based on revelation. Revelation by the prophetic anointing. Anybody here, what is prophetic? What is prophetic? Prophecy, prophetic. Hmm? Huh? Okay, doing prophecy, that I know, but what is that doing prophecy or hmm? telling about the future? Okay, future, fine. Uh, anything else? What is prophetic or being prophetic? Okay, God reveals something or God tells something about another person. OK, fine. That is part of prophetic, correct? What is prophetic? OK, here in the chat, God's revelation. Angeline says, God's revelation. Hmm? Revealing God's will. OK, revealing God's will. It's the uh, Holy Spirit speaking about uh... Uh, unknown things and uh, things to come in the future. OK, so the Holy Spirit uh, speaking about unknown things or things to come in the future. Uh, and Lucy says, uh, praying for the revelation of God. OK, fine. So all of us are correct. OK, prophetic means uh, knowing God's heart okay. in, put, in a simple way, knowing God's heart about something or about someone. So what does God want for this person? Or what does God want in this situation? So that is being prophetic. When we are, or we may say, hearing from God. What does God say? Or what does God speak? He speaks what is in his heart for us. So being prophetic is understanding what is in God's heart. And that's that is revealed to us through what he speaks. So now we will talk about praying prophetically or led by God, as revealed by God. There are some prayers that we should pray. Uh, and the, the good um, thing for us to do is to, there is an APC publication. It is available here also. It is um, called Understanding the Prophetic. How does God speak? How can I hear God's voice? How can I interpret what he is speaking to me? So these are all things which are in that publication. And I would encourage us, if you have the time, to read it. But 
in the uh, class i'll just cover the uh, important parts about prayer prophetic prayer okay now coming to uh, prophetic prayer one needs to pray uh, god's heart and mind for the people so as god reveals we need to pray that through so there are times when god will tell us some things and uh, he wants us to pray he wants us to stand in agreement to his will uh, for a particular person um okay. there are some scriptures here fine let's read these scriptures and then i will uh, proceed so isaiah 45 verse 11 can someone read that please and another person the next verse and the another person the third verse so just pass the mics around isaiah chapter 45 verse 11 thus says the lord the holy one of israel and his maker ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands you command me okay great so god is saying we can ask him about what he plans to do what he wants to do so he will answer us okay fine next one next uh, scripture isaiah 42:9 hmm. behold the form things have come to pass a new things i declare before they spring forth i tell you from tell you of them okay so god is saying um that there, there are things that he has spoken which have already happened and there are new things that god is speaking okay god is speaking new things before those new things take place he's telling us he's revealing it to us so that's the kind of god whom we serve uh, he's happy to reveal his plans to us and so we must listen to those plans uh, and act on it the next uh, scripture isaiah 46 and verse 10 isaiah 46 verse 10 uh, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure okay thank you sister um, gatrun so this scripture is a beautiful scripture because you know what it says that um, god declares the end from the beginning what that means is it you know when we read a book like maybe a mystery book or um, uh, like a, a book filled with suspense we're reading it and we're thinking hey who's the, who's the culprit uh, at the end of the book we want to find out the answer it's like god already knows he knows the end from the beginning when he starts reading the book only he knows the end it's like that so uh, in other words what god is telling us is we don't know the end but he already knows the end he knows the end from the beginning that means we can ask him we can say okay god what is the purpose of my life because he already knows we have still not finished living our life but he knows the end of my life from the beginning or we can say god what about my city he already knows the end from the beginning what about the world what about the nation all the answers are with him he's aware he knows okay or um, anything else anything at all that i want to find out everything he knows so god knows all things and which is why we can ask him and say god we are praying please reveal to us what what is on your heart what do you want to say about a particular matter or a particular person and god can speak to us he can tell us okay so i'll just stop here um and then uh, we'll continue with the remaining uh, section after the break so uh, it's okay let's come back at 11 11 am and then we will continue okay thank you everyone <laughs>